Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Weekly Slab. This is episode number 19. We are back to talk about more sports card action, more sports action. And uh, Nate's joining myself once again. So, Nate, are you excited for today's hot take episode? Because we've got some spicy takes from the old Slab Stocks Instagram audience here. I am. And uh, it should be it should be uh, a good time. It should be a good time. We got some hot takes and I have some hot takes. For sure. Absolutely. So we're going to go down the list. We had a bunch of hot takes to made through an Instagram uh, question sticker, uh, of course, on Instagram. And we're just going to start going down the list and shouting out the people that submitted these uh, hot takes and we'll uh, give our thoughts with it. And then each hot take that is submitted, there will be some card data that goes along with it. So first hot take is from Peerless Sports Cards. And his hot take, which is not surprising given he's a huge Heat fan and Bam and a Bio fan, is Bam will win the finals MVP. Now, uh, I am not super confident that Heat team to go far. And I also don't think that they'll win the finals even if they, even if they make it there. So, Nate, what's your thoughts on that take? Um, yeah, first you have to make the finals to win finals MVP. And then you have to win the finals to win finals MVP. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just, I, I doubt that Heat team. I just don't think a team led by Bam and uh, Jimmy Butler has what it takes. I I agree with that. Uh, I love Bam. There's nothing against him. Just there's t- so many good quality NBA teams, uh, like the Bucks, of course. And some interesting card data here from last week's PWCC Weekly Auction is an Optic Pink Hollow Rookie number out 25 SGC 9.5. Sold for $288 of BAM. And then also on the same auction, a pink hollow auto on card out 25 SGC9 with a 10 auto sold for 252 So you could have gotten the on card auto a little bit lower of a grade, a mint nine versus a mint plus 9.5 for $35 or $36 cheaper. Hey, that seems like a no brainer to me. Like no brainer. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I can't understand why it didn't sell for more than that. Um, also, I just feel like Bam's cards are ridiculously undervalued as it is, uh, given how much he impacts the game. But we know how it goes with big men. You know what's weird is that he's a center. You could kind of argue that, well, he's a big man. Um, I guess we I don't really want to say center because there's not really positions in basketball these days. But he's a big man. Jokic is a big man. Embiid's a big man. Giannis is a big man. The prices on the other three, well, Jokic is kind of, kind of low, right? But the prices well, on Embiid and Giannis are strong. Um, I don't know what it takes for Bam to get there. Yeah, I mean, well, Jokic's prices are super strong now after the second season of dominance. Uh, but I think it it's difficult because it it kind of seems like the whole team argument to me. Like the more players on one team, the harder it is to have all their card values be higher. The more dominant big men, how far does it go? You know, like if he is like clearly not as good as Giannis, Jokic, and Embiid, who are all three MVP candidates. Um, is he, he's just like significantly cheaper because so many people are spending the money on the really good ones. I'm not really sure, but that's what it seems like to me. Moving on to our next one, we've got from Upstate Sports Cards, and Vladdy will win World Series MVP and League MVP in the same season. Funny, our first two ones here are both about a single player winning uh, like a championship MVP. And uh, Nate, possible with the Blue Jays this year? Oh, the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are by far the best team in the NL East for my money, and NL that in, or AL East, and that includes the Rays. And um, Vlad's going to be right there in the middle, leading this team the entire time, no doubt. So, yeah, I like that. And a thing to keep in mind is that any weaknesses they have on this team, they have guys in their minor league system that now have no place in the majors, uh, specifically Aurelvis Martinez and Jordan Groshans, because they've got Boba Shett and Matt Chapman on the left side. And so I think that one or two of those guys are going to get traded for whether it be the best relief pitcher on the market or the best starting pitcher on the market. They're going to get weapons at the trade deadline to make this team even stronger. So what you see today is already strong. What you see later is going to be stronger, and Vlad, he's going to be playing a huge part. So I like that. Nate, would you rank the Blue Jays in the top three teams of the next five years? Like for the next five years to come, will they be at the top three of the entire MLB? Well, year by year, obviously, MLB changes. It depends on what their pitching situation is in three years. You know, that can change drastically with injuries and stuff. But I can see them being close at the very least. 
Yep. And uh, interesting card sale here. This is one I've never seen before. It is a 2019 Tops Now. It's a triple rookie auto of Kavan Biggio, who I don't think he has a spot anymore, right, Nate? Uh, or- correct. Um, he, well, he's he's a utility. Utility. Gotcha. So he has he has a spot. He will get a ton of playing time, but it will be all over the field instead of. Got gotcha, you like one solid spot. So Kavan Biggio, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Bo Bichette, all three who had dads that played in the MLB also. But this is just a sick card, numbered out of 25, to have all three of them on the same card. Uh, great job to our tops there to make that for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's all on-card autos. It is, it is, which is hard to see some of these days, especially with the du- uh, duels and triples. I suppose so, it helps when they're all on the same team. Don't You can just bring it to the park and get them to all sign it. That is true. There. Much easier. Uh, next up is from Dat Greg, though, and it's Lewis Hamilton cards will end up being the grail of collecting. That is for sure a hot take because when you think about the entire – card market and formula one's place in it it's had a place for the last year and some change um of course there were older formula one cards made there's vintage formula one cards but more so the modern card markets for sure the last year and a half and uh for him to skyrocket up to the top there with the lebrons brady's mj's tiger woods um would be crazy but i do think he's on his way and the biggest thing about hamilton and the f1 card market we have barely seen any huge cards go up for auction like our most expensive hamilton card to sell publicly so far i think it was around like 75 or 50 to 75k on a dynasty patch auto number out five and if you think about it there's so many one of ones and top cards of his that just have not come up for sale but starting really today on wednesday i believe the first huge hamilton card is going live for auction it's going to go live through golden auctions it's going to end i don't know the exact end date they don't put it there but uh, 2020 Topps Chrome Formula One, the True Portrait Super Fract One of One, it's a PSA seven, is going up for auction with a starting bid of 50 grand. I do think that this thing is going to sell well over six figures, like a hundred thousand dollar range. It's going to go over that though. It's going to go into the multi hundred thousand dollar range, I believe. Um, if I had to give a guess between 250 and 300 k for the non auto, the auto has surfaced as well, but hasn't went up for sale publicly. Some of the Papardashes have also came up for sale. And or sorry, not up for sale, have been pulled, but not up for sale of Hamilton. So a lot of these things are trading hands privately and big money is being paid. Just it hasn't happened publicly yet. And Nate, remember when there is, you know, the massive six figure, seven figure sale uh, sales being reported last or two years ago now for like the big NBA cards, the Giannis logo, man, stuff mm-hmm. like that. It really sparked the market hard. I think once more six figure Formula One cards start selling, it's going to open up a lot of eyes for those high end investors. And I think we're going to see some things happen. Here's a question. Yeah, Nate. Since there's only one year, now two years of of Formula One, do you think that that might not happen for a while? Because while you had years and years and years and years and years of exquisite basketball and national treasures and this and that, so you can get multiple million dollar cards from any year. You only have two years to choose from, and there's only so many guys that could hit. There's only one guy, really, that could hit a million dollars on a card, or or six hundred thousand, or four hundred thousand, or whatever. And it's Lewis Hamilton, and I think people know that, so they're going to be holding because they don't want to sell early. So you think it? I I feel like it could be like five years, six years down the line, while they get more and more and more product out before you see any of those cards actually sell. No, I mean, I fully agree with you that it'll take some time. Like just having this one go live is massive. You know, I don't know if we'll see any of the other one of ones from Dynasty or, uh, you know, the Topps from Sapphire or Topps from Super Fractor Auto, the Sapphire one of ones. Any of those things will go live in the next, you know, few years. But this one is live. So this will help to start. But I do think five years down the line, you start to see either Verstappen or Leclerc's, you know, one of ones starting to hit half a million dollars on the biggest cards in the market. And um, of course, that'll take a little bit of time, but you're right. There's just so little supply out there that most of the people are buying them are for sure going to hold them to try to get to those seven figure ranges sometime down the line because that's like, why they'd spend that much money. We know a guy that, well, I guess I know a guy and you know a guy through me that pulled the um, Lewis Hamilton Topps Chrome Red auto number to five. And that's the type of guy that was never going to sell it in a million years. Exactly. And that's just going to keep on happening too, I think. So that's going live for sale. And yes, I do agree that Hamilton, when you start to think about the grails of collecting, you start to try to pick guys from each category. And then you think about, you know, Gretzky. And I think Hamilton's going to slot right in there next to those guys, not from the, you know, I guess, baseball, basketball, football realm. 
Next hot take we have here is from All My Cards Suck. So a very funny uh, handle there. But he says, or he slash she says, not really a hot take, I suppose, but 95 plus percent of the can't miss surefire Hall of Fame baseball prospects to invest in um, are like, I guess that the thought here is that they're not worth investing in. He says, invest in Trout, Albert Pujols, even Soto, Cooney, and Vlad. Um, and ignore, I guess, that maybe the take here is like the Bobby Witts, Dominguez, uh, all those other guys, Torkelson and Julio Rodriguez are commanding huge prices right now. Uh, two card data points before Nate gets to talk. Bobby Witt Jr., Bowman Chrome, base auto, PSA 10, last sold for $2,750. While you can't buy a comparable card of Mike Trout because obviously the PSA 10 Bowman Chrome auto is insane amount of money. Uh, you could buy a Trout 2011 Bowman Chrome Draft Refractor PSA 10 for $2,500. Uh, so obviously a way inferior card. But, you know, when you think about the amount of money you're spending, you'd have to make a decision there. Nate, what do you think? Um, obviously, we don't have the PSA 10 pop reports up, but I got to imagine that the pop report on a Trout PSA 10 or a BGS 9.5, since everyone created BGS back then, would be significantly lower on a base auto than it would be a Bobby Witt base auto PSA 10. So keep that in mind because it's you're, like, you're saying Mike Trout base auto versus Bobby Witt base auto. Yeah. So yeah. like it's way more expensive, but also there's probably a fraction of them in existence. And so for me, it, he's not wrong. Uh, people spending huge amounts of money on Bobby Witt or Julio Rodriguez or, you know, the next, the $150,000 on Volpe Bowman Chrome red auto. Like, you could get a really nice blue auto or something like that of trout for similar, if not cheaper, you know? Yeah, so there's, there's actually not the, as many as you'd think autograph PSA tens, Bowman Chrome base auto PSA tens of Bobby, what there's 124. Oh, all right. There's definitely not as many as I thought, but, but there's 40 of Mike trout, but of course a lot more of those are great at BGS back in 2009. Yeah, uh, of of course, there also might be a lot of Bobby Witt BGS 9.5 or, you know, BGS graded because it seems like a lot of Bowman guys like BGS, no matter the value. Even, yeah, even though prices don't command nearly the amount that PSA do, does. Yeah, they still just like BGS. So for me, again, he's not wrong. I, I do think that and even if you go back to Albert Poole's uh, a 2001 tops traded rookie PSA 10, you know, you could probably get it for a pretty healthy price. Compared to uh, twenty seven fifty for Bobby Witt, and he's going to be breaking seven hundred home runs this year. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, next one: by the end of the next NBA season, Tyrese Halliburton will triple in price from Thwinker on Instagram. So I pulled up an Optic Contenders teal auto out of ninety nine raw that sold for two hundred sixty dollars. They can that triple in price? I believe that'd be seven hundred eighty, or that'd be eight eighty. No, um, that specific card, don't know. Like where he's going, though, uh, in his year between between Indiana and Sacramento, he increased his points per game by three going to Indiana. He increased his rebounds by 0.4. He increased his assists by two. He even increased his steals just a smidge. Um, so he's a he's a 17 and a half, 4.3, 17 and a half points, 4.3 rebounds, nine and a half assists per game in Indiana. And now they're going to have the fifth overall pick. And the mock drafts right now are Keegan Murray, which would be funny because Keegan Murray played at Iowa. Tyrese Halliburton played at Iowa State. And now they're both going to be on a team in Indiana. Um, I just think that's funny. I don't know why. But uh, you put some talent around him, even more talent, a talent like Keegan Murray, and he could he could get even better. Yeah, I, I actually like this uh, this thought too. When you think about the, I feel like that there's such a jump that can be made between buying rookies like after their first season. Um, well, now at this point it's the second season, but NBA cards take so long to release now from Panini that still feels like their first season. Uh, and it seems like a good time to kind of make some investments over the off season, especially when you can get on card numbered autographs. You know, two hundred sixty bucks. I understand it's optic contenders, but still seems pretty decent given his talent level. Yeah, I would say, dude, he's a he's a seventeen point ten uh, assist, four rebound guy as a twenty one year old. Yeah, like that's amazing. That's amazing. 
Pierre Gasly stinks is the next one from Vincent. Uh, Slab Sex Vincent, one of our longtime interns now. Uh, funny enough, I think that Vincent's just salty isn't able to buy any yet because I have been doing some buying myself. And uh, you're correct. He's the worst buy ever. No one buy. Uh, I will just keep on collecting myself. Then. We'll just keep pushing that that ceiling down for you <laughs> and you'll scoop them all up at dirt cheap prices. That That's the plan. Um, moving on to our next one is from Mansur Has- Hassan. There's nothing organic in this hobby today. Everything moves off of hype. Uh, example, WWE Prism. So that is two-part thing here. One is about WWE. I mean, it's kind of intertwined. But as for WWE Prism, I just want to call out that last week we talked about the Color Blast uh, Raw Cena that was like up to $11,000 on bids. The person that bought it, bought it in quotes, uh, ended up messaging the seller and said, oh, one just sold for $7,500. Uh, I can't buy this anymore. And then didn't pay. And then the, the next one that I actually did end up selling, I don't even know if that 7,500 one actually got paid for. Uh, the next one I ended up selling was like 3,400 on a best Ooh. offer accepted. And you go on the eBay and you look up the sales history and the $11,000 one that was not paid for was canceled. It's still sitting there in the sales history. Will eBay ever actually take the time out and the care to not show sales that don't get paid for? Like when they know that they're canceled, why, it's not, why would, why would they? See, that's the problem, Nate. There's a lot of reason to, but when you're driven by the dollar, there's a lot of, a lot of reason to not, and that's the, the problem. The Yeah, the the whole model of eBay is have people spend more money on cards so they can collect more money on the fees. Exactly. If they have a false sale up there that causes people to spend more money on the similar card, it's beneficial to them. Not beneficial to literally anybody else, but it's beneficial to them. It's 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 absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But we move. Oh, wait, no, we don't move on because I actually want to talk about the first part of this question or hot take. There's nothing organic in this hobby today. Uh, that that's obviously like super super hot take, and that's probably to like the furthest extent to say. But there's definitely a point here that like there, you know some things like WWE Prism go through hype stages through a lot of people opening product, a lot of people breaking, a lot of people sharing it. And then you get the John Cena stuff that goes up to eleven thousand dollars. People think it might get paid for, and then ends up not. It's just like there's a lot to pick apart here, and there's a lot to be careful of. I guess is what I'd say. Now I will say that nothing organic is in this hobby. Like that's that's not true. Like there's so much that's organic. There's so much collecting out there. There's so much passion between communities and stuff. And and yes, there is a side of stuff that that gets hyped up really fast and really hot. And some people would say Formula One. And, and I'd say, yes, you're right. It did get hyped up really hot. You know, a lot of people joined in. But I think it's going to be the type of thing where a lot of people stick around too. So I think that that's warranted. Um, not that WWE doesn't have a huge product or a huge uh, fan base. They do. They have a massive fan base. But for this exact prism set, it just seemed a little out of whack to start in. I think that we'll see maybe some suppression as time goes on. And a good reminder to you know, if, if you're not a WWE guy, just stay in your lane. If you collect basketball, don't chase the hype. Don't chase the hype of if you're a football guy or a baseball guy or a hockey guy or a skateboarding guy. You know, don't chase the hype of what's hot to try to make a buck. Just stay in your lane. Do what you know, and you'll come out ahead in the long run. Yeah, to give some context for this, I watched like nearly the entire Formula One, like actual racing season last year. Not, not Driver Survive. I didn't even watch Driver Survive before I started watching the actual racing season last Which year. Which is impressive because I feel like it's the inverse for almost every single person that started watching F1 Yeah, uh, to this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I took the full year to watch and to learn about the drivers and to understand at least parts of the sport. And then I finally started buying cards for my own collection within the last few months. So like, there's a lot of people I think that, like Nate said, do just like see something that other people like and then jump in and buy. But make sure you actually like yourself before you start to spend a lot of money because you can very easily find out that once you actually don't like it and the investments lose money, you'll be very upset with yourself. And that's happened to just about everyone, I think, at some point. Mm-hmm. Which is why Nate never touched Messi Prism for four dollars, even though he should have. He's like, yeah, you know, if I don't really like it, then you know, if I'm upset it's, it's one true. Day, I even had him in. I even had him in my in my cart. I literally had them in my eBay cart and I, I just couldn't pull the trigger because it just it just wasn't in my in my lane. Right. I just didn't enjoy it. And it was cheap. It wasn't like life altering money I was spending here. It was pennies on the dollar and it could have been huge amounts of money, but it just wasn't for me. And like I look back and I kind of kick myself because Aaron was like, dude, you should do this. But I also don't really kick myself because I just didn't have the love for soccer and to an extent. 
I, I enjoy looking up Premier League standings and seeing highlights and stuff, but I'm still not like sitting down and watching full matches. Right. You know, and it, it takes it takes a while to get get that love for something in oh, you. Definitely. And I don't think you should I don't think you should go and go gung ho on the card. Or maybe you should. <laughs> Hear me out. Maybe you go gung ho on the cards and it makes you love it more. Well, that's also what I've started to find too. If you start buying and then it gives you a reason to watch and to be invested in it, then it does really tie in really quickly. You know, soccer wasn't that way for me. I didn't watch a year of soccer and then start buying like the Formula One. Um, I started buying and then started watching. And it ho- hooked me really quickly. We got our next hot take here from Jim Bro. We don't have to decipher this at all. Nate touches his beard because he's nervous for the Brewers 2022 season. <laughs> it's a nervous hey, twitch. We won last night. Of course, we gave up a grand slam to Cedric Mullins, but we won last night. It was of course, the Nate Orioles, hasn't... but we won last night. And you'll notice that Nate hasn't touched his uh, beard at all today in the episode so far. Well, I think I touched it once. I've been trying to keep my hands in my sweatshirt pocket. I see that. I see that. Uh, Julian's hot take. Bulls in five tomorrow over Giannis. That is just an absolutely blasphemous, silly take from a delusional Bulls fan. Uh, cannot wait for the series to start on Sunday. We have beat the Bulls in every single game this year. And basically, I think we've only lost one over the last 17 against the Bulls or something. So I don't want to get cocky, but there's ever a time to be excited about a series matchup. It's right now. I feel like this is one of those times where as a Bucks fan and as a Brewers fan and as a Packers fan, the um, the like, yeah, this is easy. Let's look on to the next opponent. It's going to really bite us in the butt. I really Somehow. hope not. I really, that's what I kind of did in the bubble with uh, the heat. And then that didn't go so well. Yep. Next up from Ben sports cards. Oh, nine and Herbert will be better than Mahomes in two to three years. That is one of the spicier for sure. Ones on this list. Uh, Herbert had a great season. Obviously Mahomes uh, had a, did they make the, no, they, they, they lost the bank. Let's go to super. I was like, wait one second. Uh, they had a, he had a good season, not like exactly up to his last few seasons, but a contenders, Justin Herbert variation auto PSA 10 on card, like the normal paper one, sold for $7,500 the other day. And the last patch from Mahomes contenders on card auto PSA 10 sold for $55,000 in February. So, quite the difference in price. Mahomes has won an MVP. He has won a Super Bowl MVP. Wait, he, he won a seat league MVP, right? Yep. Okay. So, he's won a Super Bowl MVP, a league MVP. And it's at fifty five grand. Now there's also not like a billion variations of Mahomes' contenders. There's only like a few different numbered ones. One being a cracked dice, one being a playoff on ninety nine, and then you maybe have like the forty nine and stuff. But it just feels like there's more contenders Herberts autos out there, especially with how many optic contenders Herbert autos are producing now. But uh, to close that gap is going to be quite difficult, Nate. And I don't know. Do you what do you think about Herbert versus Mahomes three years down the line? Are they on level playing field? And even can Herbert catch up with his career achievements? Like that's a lot to achieve. A lot the, to achieve. Here's the problem for Herbert is they have to win a Super Bowl in the next two to three years because it's impossibly hard to win a Super Bowl after a quarterback gets paid 40 some million dollars. Herbert just finished year two. Three years, he's going to be getting his rookie. Ex- a fifth year option would be in three years. He's going to be getting a rookie, er, an extension, a rookie extension, an extension after that and going to be getting paid, you know, 46, 47, 48 million dollars a year, maybe even 50. He might be the first like 50 million dollar quarterback. And uh, it's going to be really, really hard to win after that because you just can't keep the same talent around your quarterback. So if he doesn't win a Super Bowl in the next couple of years, I don't think he's ever going to catch up, even if he puts up as good of numbers as Mahomes. It's a good take right there. Next up from Jay Pete. 85 1986 Fleer Jordan, not even a rookie card, huge print runs, massive overvalue. We've talked about this quite a bit on the show in the past with Sam from Overtime Basketball. And to give some context, the last MJ Fleer PSA 8 that sold sold for $8,000. There's over like 20,000 of these things graded, uh, total, I think, of the MJs. And the PSA 8 in particular is one of the highest graded uh, copies, which obviously, once you consider the cracking and resubbing it's hard to exactly know but 8255 psa 8 of 22 or 23000 total graded the last bgs 7 1984 star xrc this was the first mj card that was really out there around right as rookie season of course 86 is not mj's rookie season 
The last BGS seven sold for twelve thousand dollars in last week's golden auctions, and uh, obviously it's four thousand dollars more. But there's significantly less amount of uh, Jordan eighty four stars out there. PSA doesn't even grade that that card. They haven't for a long time because of how there are so many fakes that are coming out of it. So um, obviously, you know, when it's authenticated by BGS, there's been fakes that have made out there in BGS slabs. So, but I just just going off of assumption that you know BGS seven selling for twelve grand is real. Uh, probably a much wiser investment. Spend four thousand dollars. We know how much rarity and scarcity moves in the market. A lot harder when you have eight thousand PSA eights potentially floating out there. Hey, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And, uh, you know, people are going to say, well, it's iconic card, this and that. And it's true, but there's so many, so many out there. Next up from Alex Norton, 11, Josh Allen, MVP and Bill Super Bowl. Isn't it funny how we have like three of these things with like player winning MVP and player winning uh, championship? Like it's the third one now. Hey, uh, they're, excited about, they're excited about their team. They like are. It. And the Bills have gotten close a couple of times now, have not made it to the Super Bowl yet. But uh, it feels like that it's inevitable for them to make an appearance here. But keep in mind, they got to run through some extremely difficult teams in the AFC and really good quarterbacks, too. Uh, there is only one city in all of sports that is close to the size of, at least American sports, that is close to the size of Green Bay. And it is Buffalo. Buffalo is like the size of Madison. It'd be Madison having a professional sports team. That'd be crazy. <laughs> and uh, that would be crazy. And so for me, I'm all I'm all aboard. If the Packers aren't going to win, I would love to see the Bills win. Same with me, for sure. And some interesting things about his Prism Gold card. So we're looking at two cards here. First one is Prism Gold Auto Rookie, number out of 10, BGS 9.5. Just sold on eBay, a best offer for $35,000. If you go back to the last Prism Gold non-auto that sold is within the last couple of months, PSA 10 sold for $228,000. I believe that's through the PWCC Premier Auction. That is a massive difference. And I understand sticker auto. I understand that the most sought after Prism cards are the non-autos. But we're talking about nearly a $200,000 difference between the 9.5 Prism Gold Auto numbered out of 10 and then the non-auto PSA 10. This is the type of deal where I can't even... And I understand that people spending two hundred grand can justify that price difference for someone like us. Like obviously give us the cash and then let us walk away with a thirty five thousand dollar card, but that's a silly option to give someone who doesn't have that much money. Uh, clearly they're gonna take the cash every time, but still, just thinking about it, it's crazy. It's the same. It's the same card. Just, just about. one has a sticker auto on it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it has an auto on it too. So I, yeah, it's it's nuts. I sometimes the looking at that stuff is really hard to process. I understand the difference. Like there's such a small difference in some cards, but such a big price difference. I remember last weekend um, there was two prism black Kobe, one of ones to sell from the 2014 prism line. One was the pulser, which is cut, you know, not as good. And then one is the actual black one of one, the actual black one of one PSA nine sold for 250,000 some dollars. The P or the BGS 9.5 uh, black pulser sold for like $25,000. Another one where it's like a 10x different in price for very, very similar cards with one slight smidge difference. That just shows how nitpicky the high-end audience is really and where the big money goes. I mean, that's just crazy to think about. It really is. Of course, I would argue that 35000 is also big money. Well, I'm not saying it's not big money. It obviously is big money. It's worth more than any card I have for sure. But uh, it's, it's just, yeah, that's a lot of money difference. Next up from Matt underscore C O Y G. Nate, does that ring a bell to you? No. C O Y G. Mm -mm. You ever get Arsenal fans coming to your chat and say C O Y G and you're like, what the heck does that mean? I don't think so. Or I haven't noticed it. <laughs> I may have seen people say that before. I <laughs> just uh, right past me. It means uh come on, you gunners. So Matt underscore C O Y G ah. is an Arsenal Gunners fan. And his take is Panini boxes are way too expensive and I'm glad they're losing all of their licenses. Now, they're not losing all of their licenses, but they're losing a significant chunk of them. Well, they're losing WWE <laughs> and yeah, and NFL and NBA uh, and just and, and Euro, the, the European championship that happens every four years. They're losing that too for soccer. And we're not 100% sure they can even make non-licensed product because, no, because the Players Association. Players Association was in agreement They'll just do uh, player number 27, Los yeah. Angeles of Anaheim or whatever. They, they basically have to take a jersey and then just put a number on it and then just insert like memorabilia. 
But they can't <laughs> even. Know, they, they'd have to like misspell angels as angles or something because <laughs> can they even write angels on there? I think that I that's know. probably in violation also. <laughs> Uh, but back to this take here. Uh, I agree with this take. 2021 Prism NFL Hobby Boxes are pre-selling for $1,500. I can't even, go buy a Contenders Auto. Can't, I can't, literally can't fathom that. You can get a very nice Contenders Auto of just about any of the quarterbacks for around you that price. You can buy a base Contenders Auto of literally anyone for yeah. $1,500, I'm pretty sure. And then... Speaking of contenders, contenders basketball boxes. So going from NFL to NBA here, contenders basketball. It's releasing this week, I think. Um, Six hundred fifty dollars pre order, and that's Ooh. not like the, that's not like the NFL where NFL gets four autographs. Of course, you're going to get players who are going to be worth like three dollars in the NFL boxes, but at least it gives you more chances. NBA is two autographs at six hundred fifty bucks a box, releasing after the regular season is done. This stuff just blows my mind. How Panini blew every single release date ever and is still charging ridiculous amounts of money for these boxes. I just, I just I can't even understand. I, I remember thinking that uh, 2019 contenders, when I was working at the shop for $300, a box was expensive and insane. We yeah, doubled I that. I know. I know. It's crazy. It really is. Uh, next hot take from, Toledo cards, Marvel PMGs will never recover. So there has been a sharp decline in Marvel PMGs, specifically the Captain America going from around $80,000 to around $20,000 is around like a $67,000 drop in the span of two months. Now that card in particular, like that PSA 8 sold for 88K when the raw was selling for around like $12,000. Like, I don't really know who went out there and maybe had a bidding more and was like, I really need this for like a set or I just really need this in general and spent $88,000. But that is a ridiculously high drop for a card like that. And I'm not saying that it was, wasn't going to come eventually it was, but if you look at like, let's say Dr. Strange, when you don't get a massive sale that just is super out of whack, his PSA seven blue PMG from 2013, uh, sold for like $2,000 at the beginning of January, $2,600 in the middle of January. And then most recently, April 9th, an all time high of $4,000 for the PSA seven. So that card's increased 95% in the last three months. And the same amount of time that captain America's dropped, Sixty-seven thousand dollars. Now I understand Doctor Strange Two is going to be on the way, and that's definitely helping the price of this card. But like sixty-seven thousand dollar drop, something was wrong with that eighty-eight thousand dollar sale. Uh, the twenty-two thousand for a PSA eight makes much more sense, given that like a raw is twelve thousand um, dollars, because raws can grade the sixes and sevens of these things. And if you hit an eight, that's a nice grade, and you make like ten grand. So even at that point, the twenty-two thousand dollar sale is probably really good. You know. Do you ever sit there and wonder what some of these people that spend that money and then look up two months later and have lost sixty thousand dollars in value on their card are thinking? Like uh, I, you must, if you have eighty eight thousand dollars to spend on a card, it must not matter. I, right? I really do hope, fingers crossed, that people that do buy those types of things that drop in price, like Nate said, it doesn't really matter like a whole lot. You know, obviously it's a lot of money either way, but like it's better than someone who like has maybe like 150k in total everything and then spend 88k on a captain america and then it drops like that man that'd be tough but also that's a word to the wise that when something goes up in price so 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 fast that there's more than like you know two out there of the card where you can't really like control the market of you know if you have a one of one you got the only one if you got out of 50 there's probably gonna be more getting graded considering they're all raw at some point and that card was worth three thousand dollars back in December. So, nor basically anyone that's selling that card for twenty two k is probably so ecstatic. The mm -hmm. only person who's not is the one that paid eighty eight for it. So, mm -hmm. that's where that goes. Next up, this is one for Nate, card collector twelve. Kyle Lewis is a great investment, and the Giants are going to be good. So, kind of a two part thing here. We'll focus on the Kyle Lewis. Uh, the last Kyle Lewis uh, Bowman Chrome Auto to sell, like out of any colors or anything. Was a gold wave first auto from 2016, number dot 50 BGS9 for $380. Imagine what $380 gets you today, Nate, for the prospects that are coming out today. Barely even a base auto of some of these guys. But what do you think about that sale and just Kyle Lewis in general? Consider me a Kyle Lewis fan. Consider me also somebody who would not be spending money on Kyle Lewis. <laughs> uh, he is going to be turning 27 in July. He's not healthy currently. He hasn't really been healthy in years. Uh, he missed opening day, and he's going to be out for a little bit still. And the Mariners have Jesse Winker, who's not going to be losing his spot. Mitch Hanniger, Jared Kelnick, Julio Rodriguez. 
are the Mariners now now obviously J Rod and Kelnick could keep doing poorly and then they won't have a spot, but it's unlikely that the Mariners say to themselves if if they just traded for Jesse Winker and he's a 900 plus OPS guy the last two years, so he's not losing his spot. And then the other two guys, Rodriguez and Kelnick, if they're performing well, you're not giving up your young top prospects spots to play Kyle Lewis. Mitch Haniger is a 40 home run hitter last year. And who knows how many home runs he's going to hit this year. The only way I see Kyle Lewis getting time is if Hanniger gets traded at the trade deadline, if they're not in contention or something, and he slots into that DH role. Otherwise, he's going to be a very limited time fourth outfield option that gives guys days off, uh, kind of like Tyrone Taylor on the Brewers. I just don't see how you could invest in that. And I, I love I love Kyle Lewis. I just don't see it. Yeah, I got you. Hopefully you can get a chance maybe elsewhere if it's not with the Mariners. Yeah. Got next one here from RG. Jamie 24 had debate with someone who is an art influencer, and he said Brett Favre is one of the all-time goats. Please stop. <laughs> uh, well, consider us Brett Favre fans as Packer fans, but I want to bring up these two card seals here to really decipher what's going on with Favre's market. 2008 Topps Chrome. Brett Favre, gold up 199, PSA 9. Interesting, they're numbered off 199 that year. Uh, super set cards, but the PSA 9 is over 230. I couldn't get a direct comp to Peyton Manning, but a PSA 10 of the gold out of 199 of Peyton Manning. So for 595, you got to kind of assume that for Favre, PSA 9 is over 230, the 10 would at least sell for around $600. Uh, not the easiest cards to grade in the world, uh, given centering issues on those things. But if let's just call it Farb and Manning's level uh, market for this specific car's level, do you think that is warranted? Do you think Manning should be more? Do you think Farb should be worth more? Because obviously, I don't want to bring Tom Brady in this guy's a goat, so it's not even worth comparing to him. But I, what do you think here? I think people should remember that Brett Favre was around before Manning, before Brady. He set all and Breeze and Rogers. He set all the records before these guys started poaching their records. And he was setting records and throwing for yards in an era that didn't really have that. Like, without Brett Favre slinging the ball around, you're probably not going to have these other guys. Like, I think he I think he kind of set a little bit of a new era, and he didn't get to play in the 2010s, you know, where uh, it became a lot easier for quarterbacks to pick up stats. Um, I mean, you're talking about guys like Matt Ryan picking up more stats, <laughs> just he, about – yeah, and and it's like it's like if Brett Favre was playing nowadays and you saw his stats, you'd be like, this dude's the greatest quarterback of all time. So yes, he is one of the greatest of all time. Is he the goat? No, that's Tom Brady, obviously. But if you're talking about the greatest of all time, Brett Favre has to be in your list. Uh, there's there's just there's no other option about it. To me, you know, you're looking at the Montana out of that era, the Brett Favre out of like the era after. And then you obviously get into like the Manning, into the Rodgers, into the Brady's, that type of debate. But there's so many more quarterbacks that are putting in big stats, like you said. That's hard to really decipher a lot of that. Yeah. Good take. This one's from Cage Lawyer. Nate may be shorter, but he is hotter. You know what they say, Nate, putting the hot in hot take. <laughs> I just find it so funny. Cage is absolutely hilarious. Cage has never been writer, so... Well, I tell you what he's not wrong about is that people can't believe the amount of people it's still every single new video, every single new pose. It's like cannot believe how short Nate is compared to Aaron. And then they see, then they stand next to you in person, and then they realize you're six five. Yep, exactly. And then it's like, I mean, I am short. I'm only five seven, so I I will t I will take that on the chin. But well, but hey, I made Ryan Card Collector two look like he was like five two in one of the posts he put up one time, and people were like, "Dude, I'm not that short. It's just Aaron's really tall." Yeah. So hands up, don't shoot. <laughs> uh, this is a good one from the collector 1113. This year's rookie NBA class will match the 2003 class in terms of relevance. Uh, so if you look at the 2003 class, you had LeBron, Wade, Carmelo, and Bosch. And then if we go down the recent draft classes, at first I was kind of thinking 2020 because my mind always goes to cards and Panini obviously has delayed 2021 cards so much that I didn't even think about it. But if you look at 2021 draft class, uh, Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Mobley, and Scotty Barnes. 2020 draft class, LaMelo, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Halliburton, and then Desmond Bain also. 
2019 class, Draw, Zion, Darius Garland, and Tyler Hero. 2018 class, Luca, Trey, Shea, JJJ, and DeAndre Ayton. Um, looking at these on the list, Nate, which of the last four draft classes do you think is most likely to match 2003 class in terms of relevance, ignoring that LeBron's like one of the top two players of all time? For any of these guys to match LeBron will be very difficult. Um, but just in terms of overall, because – the hot take, the collector 1113 said that this year's rookie class, Cade, Green, Mobley, and Barnes, and then I guess anyone else that will progress over time, slot into there. I disagree heavily with that take. Um, well, one, I, lo- I love Cade Cunningham. I love Mobley. I love Barnes. Green, tough year. Uh, but the other three had really, 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 really good years. That being said, I wouldn't choose any of them, but... If you had to choose one, it would have to be Luca, Trey, Shea, JJJ, Aiton. Uh, definitely, I think Ja, Zion, Garland, and Hero would be the bottom of my list. Zion, obviously not healthy. Ja, love him, but the Grizzlies do well without him and with him. And then Garland and Hero. Garland's been really good. Hero's been decent this year. It just doesn't do it for me. You could um, probably say RJ or Hero, whichever one ends up being the more premium player three years down the line or five years down the line. But yeah. I mean, to me, it's if you're picking between all these, it's got to be Luca, Trey, Shea, JJ, JJJ, and Aiton. I think all five of them are going to be impact players for the next decade, and it's hard to do that with five guys from one draft class. Now, you also could argue Lamelo, Anthony Edwards, Maxi, Halliburton, and Bing all could be five impact players for the next decade, also. So I think we've been really blessed, actually, with really amazing draft classes in the last five years. Uh, but yeah, it'll be fun to watch. It'll be definitely fun what, to watch. What blows my mind is. Lamelo Edwards, Maxi Halliburton, Bain. That was quote unquote going in weak draft class. Yeah, I know. Very I weak know. draft class. And I mean, like Halliburton, that's a uh, Big 12 player, Iowa State. <laughs> Desmond Bain, that's a Big 12 player, TCU. So uh, Edwards played at Georgia. You know, Lamelo didn't even play in college. Tyrese Maxey is the only guy that came from a big time school in uh, Kentucky. So it's it's kind of it's just kind of cool to look at how like NBA and college basketball are kind of changing where you can get a star from anywhere yeah. and to play anywhere. Shout out to Lillard and McCollum. They were like the first I remember being a smaller school is getting drafted in the top, you know, 12 picks in the draft and really being amazing. Uh, Weber State and uh, Lehigh. Mm-hmm. Next up uh, from the Woo- well, what about Steph Curry? Davidson was not yeah, a big school. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Steph Curry is before them. Uh, the Wook with the three in the the in the handle. How flippers move from one product to the next and alter the market value because of it. And that is very true. You know, wherever the money flocks to try to make money short term is definitely going to move the market. I mean, you could argue WWE. If you really wanted to, you could argue Formula One for people um, outside looking in who maybe don't collect it. All I know in Formula One is the supply is so dang low. Like even trying to get boxes to taste so freaking difficult. Even after I'd say like the flipper crowd maybe moved in and moved out. It's just so hard to get boxes. There's so little made. Tops needs to, and they will. They're probably one year away from this. They need to release Merlin Formula One. Well, Merlin doesn't make sense because that was actually a soccer card brand. So they need to release Finest. <laughs> That'd be funny if they did make that, though. Finest and all those other sets that they make to actually make product accessible because it's so expensive for people to get it. It's so dang expensive for people to get decent Formula or even any other Formula One product. There's so few. They made Flagship this year, which is a little cheaper, but I don't really like a worse version of a product. That, I do think that's kind of the appeal, though. It like is the Formula it is One. The you don't have that many guys to choose from. You've got twenty four racers in F one and twenty four racers in F two. Twenty racers in F one. I'm not exactly sure the amount in F two. Okay, so I mean, let's say there's twenty and twenty. That's forty dudes. Imagine if there was only a forty person checklist for baseball every year, and you ran out like twenty different products. No, like, hey, I agree with you. That makes the top end card stronger, or it just makes the overall card stronger in price. Uh, but I also think to actually connect with enough people, you you have to start to release different products. I mean, when you're talking the cheapest pack you can get into is like sixty bucks a pack. Like that's crazy. I get it. I get it. It's just it's just one of those things where it's it's there's no change between the things. It's always the same guys. It's going to be the same guys every year unless somebody loses a seat. But then you're going to get an F two guy coming up. And so it's not going to really be any change because he's already going to have cards that just have his first F1 card. 
yeah, interesting thing is though is that the rookie cards are really selling like very strong on the 2021 set compared to their 2020 F2 cards. And you're right, you know, a lot of those F2 guys that will maybe get a seed in the future will already have cards and stuff, but it's no different than first Bowman Chrome versus yeah, another 2019 fair, rookies. Fair. I just I I guess what I'm trying to say is like you get you get three different levels of your things of Bowman every year, and there's different Bowman first autos in every single thing, and the checklists are always gigantic. There's you know, um let's say a hundred, a hundred different guys per auto. That's 300 different dudes for just Bowman. And there's yeah. guys that also don't have autos that have first Bowman's that, um, you know, so you could be talking like in addition of 350, 400 dudes a year to the baseball world. I mean, you might be adding uh, five guys a year to the F1 world, three guys. I know. I know it's different. But that's just how the sport is. There's thirty some teams and thirty teams in baseball. There's forty man rosters. All the different pipe pipeline guys. Like that's just how it is. It's just a difference in what it is. But I still think that there needs to be more product out there okay. um, for it to be seven or six hundred some dollars a box to the cheapest Topps Chrome product you can buy with light. That's that's a lot. Like that's crazy. So that's fair. Uh, hopefully, more product in the future of maybe like good product. I don't want them to water it down with bad product. Just make good stuff that's affordable, which is hard to do in today's market. Uh, Next up from Herbert for president. Well, one, one last, one last thing. I yep. think what I was really getting at was that no matter if it's good product in your eyes or, or, or bad product, like if they brought out say Merlin, like you said, or if they brought out and you know, they have tops dynasty and tops Chrome. If they bring out any other type of product like that or a Bowman F1, right? I don't know. I feel like you would think it's good product, but it would water it down anyways just because there's such a lack of um, names in the product that how many people just want the same, the same dudes in six different sets. Yeah, no, I mean, I get it. But at the same time, sometimes you think it, uh, once you add more supply to the market, it actually makes the stronger cards even stronger because it's like, man, these are the best of the best now. That's true. There's pros and cons to it. I'm not going to disagree with Nate on that. Herbert for president. Prism Blues are the most overrated basketball cards behind BGS Black Labels. So looking at Prism Blues, the last PSA 10 Luca, which is a color match, which people go nuts for, sold for $50,000, $50,400, which is a lot of money, obviously. Now the last Luca Immaculate Patch Auto Gold on card of 10 BGS 9 sold for $43,200. I 100% agree with this take. The fact you can save seven grand, get a card number out of 10 on card patch auto of Luca compared to his prism blue PSA 10, which there's 199 blues. I understand there's not 199 PSA 10s, but come on, man. $7,000 less for that. That's insane. That's crazy. That's That's way too overhyped. (laughs) It's one of those things where like I read the, I read the, the question when I was looking over things before we started. I was like, okay, and then you see the numbers, and you're like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Immaculate is the second most premium brand out there. Third, flawless for sure. We're all flawless. The third most premium brand out there, and his one of his top cards you can get out of it, and one of the top cards from the entire set that you can get out of it is selling less than a blue out of one ninety nine. One well, sad story. So back in 2000 and you owned a blue out in 199, 2019, I was sitting in class. I was at the business school at the time, Wisconsin. And this is what I do every single class. I just look at cards <laughs> or work on content and prism just released. And I was, uh, submitted an offer on a prism blue out of 199 It listed for 400. I Whoa. submitted, I submitted an offer for $350 and didn't just buy it. Now I knew it was a good price, a good card. And I missed it. <laughs> and then I ended up buying a silver for like, I think 300 because I couldn't get the blue. So like cool. literally it was that close in price. Back well, then. you would have sold it anyways. So yeah, you're right. I probably would have sold for like $2,000. You weren't making 50,000 bucks. No, 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 no. I wasn't, but still a very sad thing because I knew I really wanted that card, but it's just like, sometimes you just got to pay the extra 50 bucks if you really want it. I so. just brought that up in uh Dane corners the other day. Sometimes That's a hey, great point. And I almost felt failure to this last night so there's a pure ghastly uh 70th sapphire portrait of 70 that got listed um for 400 best offer great deal 
and I offered 300. Came back at 365. And I was trying to squeeze a little bit more out. I offered 335, but I'm like waiting an hour to hear back. And I was like, dude, this is going to sell for 400. I'm going to blow it. And then I end up actually luckily getting the offer accepted at 335 or something like that. But literally like, the same as like price for the card compared to the Luca back then. And I almost messed up again. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just, if you like the card, if you think the card is going to be a $1,000 card one day, you're not going to look back and say, wow, I spent a hundred more dollars than I wanted to or, or 30 more dollars. <laughs> yeah. You know? 30. Yeah. I should have really just taken the 365, but I, was, I don't know what I was doing, but I still got it. So it worked out luckily that time. Uh, but now we're going to move on to our PWCC flip quest number episode number 13 this week of 2022. This Sunday night, 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be back on YouTube live for our Flip Quest episode number 13 here on the PWCC Weekly Auction. So please come and check it out. And as for this week's cards that are ending, there are a couple of cards we want, we want to share because I think that this next one I'm about to show you, this first one I'm going to show you, is quite the amazing card. This is a 2020 Panini Flawless Jackie Robinson patch auto, one of one. Uh, this is a cut autograph. I've seen Jackie Robinson cut autos in the, pa- in the past. But when you're talking about patches like that, that's sick. That is nasty. Now, let me flip this card over here. We know how much people care about game use versus not game use. The enclosed game worn slash used material and signature guaranteed by Panini. That is one of the coolest cards I might have ever seen in my life, actually. Like, that is so sick. Best wishes, Jackie Robinson. I just. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. I love how old the patches look. Yeah, super old. So cool. The last sale of any Jackie Robinson cut out of one of one from Flawless was from 2016 Flawless and sold for $9,100 on December 19th. Now that had a like navy blue jersey in it and the cut autograph, um, I would say doesn't look as good. It was just it's a little thinner, the, the margin and stuff. But this one has a big, big area on it. It says best wishes, Jackie. And uh, man, that is just such a cool card. Super special. I cannot wait to see what this sells for. I think that this is for sure eclipsing $10,000. And uh, to say for certain, I don't know, but man, that is so sick. We are going to scroll down here to Nate. What Victor. is it? Victor Cosa, true blue, or true blue, true orange. I saw blue up up above. It was just stuck in my mind. True orange auto number to 25 PSA 10. Uh, Acosta is one of those guys that I'm excited about. Came out in 2021 Bowman. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to see him stateside. He's still only 17 years old, 17, 307 days. So he's getting close to 18, but he is 17, and hopefully we will get to see him in like extended spring training, rookie ball this year, maybe even A ball. Uh, I'm excited about him, and I'm curious to see where this card goes because for me, it's a bit pricey for a guy that's not played uh, outside of the Dominican Summer League, but people are bold, people are brave, and they like to spend big money on who guys they think could be the next big thing and victor acosta could definitely be the next big thing so i want to track this bad boy nice big price or 1675 we'll see what closes at this sunday and speaking of closing this sunday we've got a new feature here to share on the pwcc weekly auction it is the flash feature so currently there are 28 cards that are added um these this is a huge feature ad like massive feature ad like this gives you the ability to list cards in your vault um, with PWCC for the upcoming weekly auction, any time between from the start of the auction, let's say weekly number 13 started last Thursday, you could start it then all the way up until I believe it's 72 hours in advance. So it's about three to four day lead time of it closing on Sunday. So right now, 28 cards have already been placed in this. You see different um, cards here in the flash auction, flash auction specific tab. This is a pretty huge bonus here. I mean, this is automatic access to just 28 cards as a seller that you know people are going to see your card pretty easily if you just put in right away and then as a buyer too you get to see stuff that gets newly listed to see if you can snag any deals at the end of the close on sunday so nate did just commit a 2019 bowman mega julio rodriguez psa 9 so we will track that in the first ever flash auction here on sunday to see how much it goes for on last week's weekly auction number 12, we did not have any cards sell. We will not have any cards sell this Sunday either, but we did pick up one card last week, which was a 2019 Bowman Chrome Sparkle Greg Jones Auto of, 90, or of 71 BGS 9.5. I have never heard of this guy in my life, but Nate said we had to get it, and why, Nate? Uh, we got it because it was a good price. He is a shortstop prospect for the Rays. He's a little bit older, 24 years old, but if he puts up a good season – he can definitely jump into the top 50 prospects by mid-season or maybe top 60. And from there, 
you got to figure out of 71 auto BGS 95 already. I know it's a nine auto, but uh, it's got to be more than 105. We, we hope that's our plan. Otherwise, we would probably would not have bought it. <laughs> Uh, but that is that was our purchase on last week's auction number 12. Uh, for this week's auction, of course, go to PWCC Marketplace to place all your qualifying bids. Now you have to have all of them in before 10 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday and at 9.45 p.m. Eastern time. Be sure to join our FlipQuest episode number 13 of 2022 to come and see what we buy and maybe stock up for selling in the future on the flash auctions. That'd be fun to see uh, how that goes. What is up, everybody? It's Zach from App Premier Soccer Investing coming out to you with yet another Slap Socks FC YouTube video. Let's get into it. So first, this is a really interesting one. The Copa, the 2024 Copa America could be played in the United States. It's not definite. There's other countries in contention to host. But this is really interesting because that would mean the U.S. would be hosting three major events in uh, soccer in back-to-back-to-back years. That would be the Copa America 2024, the Confederations Cup in 2025, I believe, and then the World Cup in 2026. And this matters for the, for the soccer card market because hosting the Copa America 2024 would mean the U.S. is playing it. The Copa America is, is an event on par with the Euro, so it would get casual fans into it. Along with the U.S. hosting, that would bring more casual fans, which would mean more eyeballs on the soccer card market, which could create one of those early booms, World Cup-like booms that will come to the market two years early, which could change the calculus for a lot of different investments, make certain guys like Neymar maybe still a more valuable longest-term investment. It, it speeds up timelines for guys like Pulisic, McKenney, Adams, U.S. guys like that as well. So this is going to be an interesting one to monitor if the U.S. does indeed host the 2024 Copa America. And for tough news for the U.S. here, Gio Reyna torn tendon out for the rest of the European season and possibly longer. This is definitely not an easy injury to recover from. And he's had injuries in this area in the past. And hopefully this is the last one of them, but tough to see for sure. And then... Manchester United has agreed to terms verbally with to hire Eric Ten Hag as their next manager. He supposedly will be given a large sale for sporting matters, including transfers and the like. I like this hire a lot for United. If any, the problems in that club are obviously very, very deep set and worse than just who's in charge. But Ten Hag has been very successful with multiple iterations of this Ajax team taking them obviously to the Champions League semifinal, winning uh, the Dutch League multiple times, which before he had got that they hadn't done in a long time. Even just getting to the knockout stage of the Champions League, they hadn't done in almost 15 years before his arrival. So obviously he's a manager to know that knows how to win. Yes, it will be his first job in a top five league, but with his European pedigree, I think he'll be successful. There's a lot of dead weight to clear out of that United squad. A lot of personalities that, maybe don't fit like they thought they would. But Ten Hag, if anyone can turn him around, I think he will, which could mean a change of fortunes for guys like a Sancho, a Rashford, guys like that. We'll see. It'll be interesting to watch what United does with Ten Hag, assuming they lock that one down. And then the game of the season in the Premier League this weekend, Manchester City versus Liverpool at the the ad. City one point up on Liverpool going into this one. A win by a city, and they could have really separated themselves in the title race. A win by Liverpool would have given them an advantage going into the final running. Instead, they played a well-deserved, rip-roaring football, 2-2 draw. Ederson flirting with disaster in this one. Great goals by both teams. And just obviously, these, these two teams aren't just a class of the Premier League at this point. As evidence in what's been going on in Europe, in the Champions League, these are the two best teams in the world. And, yeah, it was just a clash of Titans, and they went at it on Sunday. And the title race is far from over. City's still clinging on to that one-point lead. But City will be favored in every one of their final games. And if they win out, which is a very distinct possibility, they will be title holders. Additionally, Liverpool does have tough games against the likes of Tottenham, too, in their final run-in. So, advantage, big advantage City at this point in the title race. But both teams, brilliant brilliant football teams, a brilliant game of football in this one and just showcases to the world why the Premier League is the best league in the world. 
moving on, more Liverpool talk. So the first, they uh, they have set their spot in the Champions League final with a 3-3 draw against Benfica going through 6-4 to on aggregate. Firmino was great in this one t- with two goals. And then the man who just can't stop scoring for Benfica did it again, Darwin Nunez. He's going to be the subject of a huge transfer fee this summer. Chelsea's rumored to be after him. There's been links of other big clubs too. Uh, PSG possibly, if they lose Mbappe, could be looking for a striker. This guy's the next great striker prospect. He's just been banging in goals this season. The Uruguayan, he's in the likes of a Cavani or Suarez level talent coming out of that country. And I expect big, big things from him moving forward. And he's an interesting to watch with what few cards he has because he's going to have a big transfer to feed a big team this summer. And then he has a very good chance of taking whatever league he enters in by storm with his goal scoring ability. And then probably the shock of the Champions League quarterfinals, Bayern eliminated by Villarreal, uh, tied 1-1 on aggro, uh, in the second leg and fell 2-1 on aggro with Villarreal winning the first leg. One nil at home. Unai Emery, man, he knows how to win in Europe. He's won four Europa Leagues. He's now gotten Villarreal to the Champions League semifinal. And this isn't going to be a cakewalk for Liverpool. If Bayern couldn't steamroll them, Liverpool's going to have some problems too. They are a tough, tough team to play against. Yes, Liverpool should be heavily favored in this one. And yes, they will be the team to probably go through. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than people expect. And this is a, this is a rough one for Bayern because – they're, they looked at this uh, in across both legs of this tie like a team that's at the end of a cycle. Muller's getting old. Uh, Lewandowski's getting old. Kimmich isn't getting any younger. Their, their guys are getting old, and they might need a reset. Lewandowski, too, out of contract next summer, subject of intense transfer speculation of Barcelona, too. Who knows what's going to happen with that one? And then moving on, what a crazy game this was today. City and Atletico finished uh, 0-0. Tons of drama. Really looked for long stretches that Atletico would find that goal to send this tie into extra time. But City held firm, moving on 1-0, setting up a great, great tie against Real Madrid, who what a tie this was. Uh, Chelsea winning the second leg 3-2, but losing on aggregate 5-4. The, the amount of superlatives that have been said for Benzema over this Champions League season have been immense, but you just you can't run out of things to say. This guy just scores great goals in the biggest moments. I have to say, Timo Werner looked very good. Mason Mount with a great goal in this one as well. And Rodrigo popping up with a goal from one of the greatest passes I've ever seen in my entire life from Luka Modric, who I talk about more in a minute, that beautiful clipped outside of the foot pass. City versus Real Madrid, a team – who with all the history in the Champions League versus a team who's never won it, this will be a great, great title watch. But moving on first to Mason Mouse. So he's his market is an interesting one right now. Yes, this is Aaron's boy for those of you know, who don't know. Slab Sox, Aaron's boy. Um, we're going to be looking at his 2019 Top Scrum Sapphire PSA 10. So 296 of these 10s, 106 nines. This is a card that's lost a lot of value this season. It was obviously it was a $330 card. The beginning of the season, it's dipped down to 170, dipped as low as like $135, which has been climbing up. Mason Mount's performances have been a little patchy this season, but in the end, his stats are still very, very good. Double digit goal involvements in the Premier League. He's putting in big goals for Chelsea. He was putting in big goals for Chelsea in the Champions League, too. But where does his market go from here in the next couple months? It's probably going to be pretty stagnant. Chelsea's season is basically done. They're going to finish third in the Premier League, they're not under pressure there. And then there's really not much going on this summer international football-wise. So we're not going to see, I think, a resurgence of Mason Mount's market until probably the World Cup, which means there will be some buying opportunities this summer if you think he's going to play a big role for England in the World Cup, which I think he will. He's been playing very well for them. So his, his market is going to be an interesting one to watch, but I think there will be opportunities for those interested in Mason Mount. And then – at this point, this guy is one of the legends of the game, one of the best midfielders of all time, Luka Modric. We're going to be looking at his 2008 rookie sticker, PSA 9. So only 141 of these total grade in the PSA pop report. Only 14 tens, 57 nines, 41 eights, 14 sevens, 11 sixes, 1 5, and 4 threes. This is a card 
for someone who, who's really, I think, cemented his status this season as one of the greatest attacking midfielders of all time, this price feels very, very low in the long term. He's won a Ballon d'Or. He's carried Croatia to a World Cup final. And he's putting in these magnificent performances for Real Madrid ever since he's got there. But especially that he's doing it at this advanced age is amazing. This car was a hundred sticker was one hundred thirty five dollars in September. It's down to sixty eight dollars as of March. I expect this to rise back up with what he's done for Real Madrid in the Champions League. But what's to say that Modric won't keep doing? what he's done this season for the next three or four years. He looks to be in great shape. Obviously the quality is still there and he's even gotten better. And I think he has a future in management as well. So Modric's market is going to be an interesting one. I think as the soccer market matures and grows, he's going to be a type of guy who's really going to gain steam in the coming years in the long term. Um, that's going to do it for this week. It's always the sales da- data and history is provided by card ladder or linked, uh, to sign up for that in the subscription of this video. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you everyone so much for watching this week's weekly slab number 19. My camera might be frozen right now. It might be black that you see that just the screen's black, but that's okay. It's just at the end of the episode. And then we had a fun time talking about the hot takes. Maybe the takes were so hot that my camera overheated. Very possible. Very possible. Very possible. Uh, Nate, what was your favorite hot take from this episode to wrap it up? Um, my favorite one was from a man named Cage Lawyer. Might be shorter. Am hotter. Nate it has to go after that, of course. My favorite hot take, I think, maybe had to do with the Panini boxes are way too expensive from Matt Coig. Uh, that I think we're, it's going to be very interesting to see what Fanatics does to maybe help out that segment of the market for. Uh, you know, people getting their hands on some decent brands for decent prices. Now, of course, you know, there's going to be stuff you can find in stores, your $3 top series one packs from, from tops baseball and stuff, but would be nice to have some more affordable options for people to get into some of that stuff. That's all we got for this week. Be sure to check out Sunday, the flip quest episode number 20 or number 13. We will see you all next week in the weekly slab. Number 20.